You know a lot about golf. Well, we're waiting. Hey, we are here. Let the bells ring out. The banners fly those weekend golf guys. John Ashton in studio and Jeff Smith in the golf cave at the Plain and Simple Golf School in Columbus. One of the things we're going to be talking about today is women. It's it's a topic that I really enjoy talking about. However, I am not going to claim any sort of um, expertise because I read something the other day that was very apropos and hit close to home. It says talking to a woman's a lot like the uh, license agreement for software. Eventually, you just stop reading and click I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, complicated and irritating. Yes. And well, I wouldn't say irritating because that would alienate the lovely females who are listening to us right now. So, no, I was merely talking about the software. Oh, agreements. software agreements are irritating. Yes. yes, yes. And at the irritation point is where the uh, the the parallels between software agreements and talking to females stops just prior to getting to the irritating point. That's you saved what he yourself meant. on that. Good that, work. That's what he meant. <laughs> <laughs> covering your butt buddy (laughs) oh so here we are sitting in in the middle of of a quasi southern city i had a conversation today with a woman down in birmingham alabama and you know there ain't no ham like birmingham we we were talking about how it's getting cold you know people get depressed when it starts getting cold up here Especially when the skies are grayish yeah and like yesterday gray skies and a little bit of drizzle it's kind of like, oh, it feels like winter, and this is not conducive to having fun outside on the golf course. And we had a slight discussion on whether Louisville, Kentucky is or is not a southern city. Right. You know? So some people say we're the southernmost northern city. Other people say we're the northernmost southern city. Either way, it doesn't matter because it gets cold in the wintertime. One of the things I wanted to ask you, which, which most golfers who live in northern climates want to know, is at what point? point on the thermometer does the temperature start to affect the flight of your golf ball at which point do these little balls go oh i don't think i'm going to go that far it's cold well certainly it's a graduated scale it's not like once it hits 32 degrees that everything just falls out of the sky right however i would tell you that below 50 degrees a lot of people tell me that they just don't seem to hit the ball as far now i'm not certain if that's because the temperature has gotten to the point where it's beginning to affect the flight of the golf ball or it's because the golfers are then wearing more clothes and they feel a little bit more bound up and are not actually swinging at the same speed. I'm not certain about that. We should do that you, research to get the answer definitively to that question. I'll bet you somebody who does research would probably do such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> In which case, I would certainly gladly find it on the internet. <laughs> and then we can talk about it. <laughs> but the truth is, I think what happens a lot in terms of uh, what golfers do and feel, as soon as they put on the extra layer – I don't feel like they think that they're able to swing the same, like something is pinching or binding or it's just not as free-flowing, and then they start missing the center of the face. And we all know that missing the center of the face is the fastest way to distance loss. Mm -hmm. And so the more clothes you have on, the harder it is for you to to produce the same, oh, let's say, midsummer form swing and start hitting it off-center. So um, I'm pretty certain that there is a factor there that's probably greater than the factor of the temperature as it relates to the golf ball by a handful of degrees. Cause it's certainly a, a graduated scale. It's not like, uh, like I mentioned earlier, it's not like once it hits a certain degree number that all of a sudden bang, there's 10 yards distance loss right away. Yeah. Can't quite be that simple. It could, no. it just wouldn't be. It just, yeah, it just yeah. isn't gonna be. Yeah. That's yeah, the thing. That's, so that's it. Normal uh, logic would dictate that because the ball flight is affected by compression and and the balls are made out of rubber and synthetic materials that probably are affected in the way they react by colder temperatures. Things tend to get a little denser and slower when it's cold. Oh, radio guy turned physicist. Here we go. (laughs) That's it. Just call me Dr. John. (laughs) You have any research to back that up, sir? No, but I have high school physics on my side, okay? 
good. All I don't right. think I took it. But no, I think you're right there because there's there's multiple things at play here. As, as temperature goes, we all know you know things tend to get a little harder when it's a little colder. Right. Common sense logic would say, hey, look, the compression on my golf ball is certainly a little bit harder to to deal with there too. It's not as not as malleable at, at impact. And so I'm sure that there's some truth in that, although I have no evidence. But it cer- certainly seems like that would be the case. We may not have the evidence, but we can deliver the theory with such conviction that who's going to question it? I'm certainly not. No. And then the question I've always had that everybody kind of looks at me when I ask it with a blank expression followed usually by a who cares – is chemical hand warmers that they sell at pro shops during wintertime. Were you to put one of those in your pocket and throw your balls in that pocket, would they stay warm? Your golf balls in yes. the pocket? Yes, and, there, and therefore fly more, more summerishly. You know, I've heard that people have tried that. And, uh, you know, putting it in your pants pocket or sticking it in your armpit or using those hand warmers. And there's actually golf ball warmers that they've sold out in the market. It's a little tube and you put them in there and you mm-hmm. flip a switch and it's a little internal thermos. The, the thermostat's a little higher and keeps it a little warmer. And they say that works. They, they must because the USGs made those illegal. <laughs> there's got to be some sort of – that's, that's there's got to be some science behind that that's true. There's a the, dead the giveaway. USGA, you, yeah, <laughs> dead <laughs> giveaway right there. All right. We're going to talk about cold golf. We're going to talk about how to keep warm for cold golf. And, you know, heading south is probably one of the best ways to do that. We're going to try to uh, dig up some folks from the LPGA to talk to us about girls golf. And we're going to talk about uh, basically just how to have some fun out there. We are those weekend golf guys. That's what we do. And we're going to come back in a couple minutes and do it some more. Don't you move. Hey, Jeff, I got to come to you, man. I need some help out playing golf last weekend. Four of us, at least two of them, out drove me on a regular occasion. To, you know, to pick up your club head speed, you know, I have found these these training aids that are just the world's best thing I've ever seen. Uh, Super Speed Golf has some training aid sticks, and they've got this beautiful training program that goes with them that you can get online. My clients have picked up a lot of club head speed and a lot of distance in a relatively short period of time. I'm more impressed with this than I am with anything else that I've ever seen on the market to make people swing their club faster. And we all know that's what, you know, one of the big factors in producing distance. That's right. Faster equals longer. That's what I'm looking for, man. Longer that's right. by being faster. Super speed. What's, what's the website? Where do Super, I go? Superspeedgolf.com. Go to superspeedgolf.com. Pick up some of these sticks. Uh, go through their training program. It is eye-popping how much distance you'll pick up. Do you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Then get on board with the tax admiral and let us steer your way to financial freedom. The IRS is the largest collection agency in the world. They can freeze your bank accounts, seize your car, home, will garnish your paychecks and benefits. Don't pick on the IRS alone. I can fight for you using industry secrets that can help stop the IRS. I'll cut your penalties, slash your interest, and reduce your overall tax bill. Sometimes I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company with over 30 years experience helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. And we have a 95% customer satisfaction rating. If you owe 10 thousand dollars or more to the irs are facing an audit a lien or levy then call me right away call 800-329-2708 again that's 800-329-2708 800-329-2708 you can always follow us on twitter it is twitter.com WKND Golf Guys on Twitter. That's where we are. We do stuff every once in a while that's absolutely worthwhile. Not often, but you never know. You don't want to miss one of our gems. And welcome back. Thanks for hanging. John Ashton here. Jeff Smith there. The Golf Cave out of Creek. And we together are those weekend golf guys. We, we were mentioning um, playing in the in the cold or the, the chillier weather, which is uh, fast approaching if it already hasn't hit you. Although I understand that, you know, it's been in the 60s here this week. It's been in the 60s in Indiana this week. Even in New York City, it was in the 60s this week. So still, we're, we're going to be talking about heading south a little bit later on in the program here, which is always a good place to go in the wintertime to play golf. The Carolinas are usually uh, a tad warmer during the wintertime than you may be used to if you're uh, above the Mason-Dixon line. 
as well as uh, the Gulf Coast, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, even Texas, uh, all good places to go. But for those of us who do tough it out, who stay you know, at home and, and uh, anxiously check the weather forecasts every evening to see if the temperature is going to be above, usually if it's above 45, I will head out there. If it's under 45, I may find something else to do rather than play golf. But, You're a fair weather golfer. How can you have a golf show and be a fair weather golfer? What the heck? I don't call, consider 45 being fair weather. <laughs> Okay. You don't consider that fair? If no. It's 45 degrees in the springtime. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to be talking about the same temperature come April, and you're going to go, it's 45 degrees, baby. Let's get outside and go play. Well, that's what I say in this in the wintertime, too. <laughs> it's 45 degrees, baby. Let's go outside and play. Yeah, if, if it's I, 44, you're staying in. If I say it's 38 degrees, <laughs> I got some stuff I could do at home and make myself feel a lot more productive. I'm sorry. My, my toes get cold quickly. All right? Oh, boy. You can dress effectively in layers everywhere but your feet unless you go out and no, buy no, winter no, you got to get the right kind of socks come on or, or go out have and, you, have and you, wear have three ever, pairs of socks you have England. to you have to buy a larger a larger size of golf shoe to do that a true golfer does those things they have winter shoes that are warmer they're weatherproof they're gore-tex they're a size you know are a half a size larger mm-hmm. and they go get the socks if you ever go into sporting goods stores or the ski stores where they've got those thermal socks and they've got the ones that are, you know, different layers and different uh, kinds of materials, the silk or something of the like, and then they put on another pair on top of them. Yeah. And your feet are warm all stinking day. Or go okay? get the electric socks they sell to deer hunters. They sell those too. Okay. There's all kinds of things that you're just sitting here trying to. Since you seem to be such an expert, let me ask you a further opinion question to get the the pontification from the authority, okay? Well, I I am an expert in my own opinion. Yes. Most of us, when we play golf, we wear a golf hat because of the visor. Mm -hmm. But in order for comfort and for warmth, I don't know what you want to call it, a toboggan, a toque, uh, just a knit hat or whatever, is what we wear to keep the ears kind of warm. Now, here's the question. Do you go sans visor when you put on one of those knit caps, or do you put your golf hat on for the use of the visor and then put the knit cap over it, which is very effective yet looks rather stupid. I know that there's a really good reason that man invented sunglasses. So that way we can wear a knit hat or a toque or a toboggan or whatever you want to call them and sunglasses. Because I'm not a big fan of that hat on top of a hat thing. Yeah, it's, me It's either. a little too goofy for me. Yeah, it does. It's yeah. goofy. So it's a European shade, thing. Put them on. Is it? I think so. I, I mean, look. you watch the British Open and a lot of times you'll see some of the British golfers doing that. Yeah, I'm not a, not really paying attention to the style at that point okay. uh, of watching them play when it's cold out. I'm just watching if they can still play when it's cold. Yeah. And uh, people do a lot of things to keep themselves warm, but I'm not a hat on top of a hat kind of guy. No. So I'll just uh, break out sunglasses and put on my uh, my, my knit cap. And uh, I like the um, – my favorite ones are the fleece. Your favorite ones are what? Polar fleece. Uh, I call them you know, the, that hat. The polar fleece. I like that. They're really warm. They're okay. really warm. I like those. That's not uh, a not, knit cap. I'm not That's... a big fan of the knit ones because, uh, yeah, I'm really not sure what kind of material that is or how it's woven, but it's yeah. certainly woven together. And it's usually fleece, wool. I like that one. Wool yarn. Yeah. Yeah. So it looked like the, the, the funky with the with the ear flaps that come down fleece. That's what you're talking about, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those are good hats. Or you could always wear earmuffs over a regular golf hat. You could. I choose not to, but you could. Yeah. I've seen people do that. But, and real, um, real quick, what are your criteria for sunglasses? Because you've seen, you know, sunglasses in pro shops for you know nineteen bucks a pair. Um, you know, you see the sun dogs for like forty nine bucks a pair, and you got like not Tommy Bahama, but who's who's the that uh, Hawaiian dude? Yeah, Maui Jim. Maui Jim that are like yeah. you know four hundred bucks a pair. I'm I'm interested in the lenses uh, before the style of the frame. And, and the lenses, because I read so much over the last few years about how you're supposed to be protecting your eyes from the UV rays, uh-huh. that that's one of my first criteria when I look at them is, um, are they UV protecting uh, my eyes as well as just making it a little bit darker can you, can you as get... well as it making it look you know like the style that you want. But I'll, I'll look at some of those. And, and I've seen some sun dogs that have, uh, they say, 100% uh, UV protection on them and you know, mm-hmm. the trouble is we as consumers 
have to trust the fact that they actually have that. Yeah. If they say they have it, there's got to be some sort of – Yeah, you'd think somebody did a test somewhere along the line. Okay. Well, UV mm-hmm. protection. That's what you got to look for. UV yeah, protection, not price point. out there. But I've seen some sun dogs and some things of that price range. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's make a call to Florida to see if we can find some uh, LPGA ladies who will talk to us about women in golf. We will do that when we come right back. We are those weekend golf guys powered by Golf Talk America. Stick with us. Every other week, we send you great tidbits, including a weekend tune-up from Jeff Smith, a quick video that will get you doing something absolutely right on the golf course. Every other week, we send it to you. If you ask us to, just go to thoseweekendgolfguys.com slash newsletter and sign up, and you'll lose some strokes in just a matter of a few issues. Thoseweekendgolfguys.com slash newsletter. Go and subscribe right now. Absolutely free. Do you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Then get on board with the tax admiral and let us steer your way to financial freedom. The IRS is the largest collection agency in the world. They can freeze your bank accounts, seize your car, home, will garnish your paychecks and benefits. Don't take on the IRS alone. I can fight for you using industry secrets that can help stop the IRS. I'll cut your penalties, slash your interest, and reduce your overall tax bill. Sometimes I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company with over 30 years experience helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. And we have a 95% customer satisfaction rating. If you owe 10 thousand dollars or more to the irs are facing an audit a lien or levy then call me right away call 800-329-2708 again that's 800-329-2708 800-329-2708 800-329-2708 if you're diabetic this message could change your life is your blood sugar out of control even when you do all the right stuff are you afraid of diabetic blindness and the risk of amputation as well as all those other side effects well you should be is there anything that could help manage your blood sugar nobetes is a natural supplement that may quickly and dramatically lower your blood sugar my name is bob quarter i've been using nobetes for about three and a half to four months now and in the first three months i've actually lowered my blood sugars from 500 down to 139 and then it dropped to 88 to 93 my name is kirsten i'm a type 1 diabetic and while taking nobetes my blood sugar levels dropped from 295 to 115 in just one day the fda hasn't evaluated these statements and nobetes isn't intended to diagnose treat cure or prevent any disease but for many it's helped drop their blood sugar so if you've been evaluated with high blood sugar don't delay evaluate nobetes now call 800-553-0803 and get your free bottle just cover shipping and handling call 800-553-0803 that's 800-553-0803 jeff you've seen me miss uh, yeah. Good. Good news is I didn't. I didn't three putt, but one green on uh, my last round. But I'm still missing by an inch or two, left or right. Man, I I need some help. What do you got? Teach me, buddy. You know, I'll tell you what. The first thing that I do with all my clinics when we're working on putting, I break out the putting stroke teacher every single time. We put this thing on. Their forearms are lined up. Their putter face is lined up in the same place. It's the straightest putt you'll ever hit. It's unbelievable. And then I'll teach you how to aim after that. But you go get it. The putting stroke teacher, <laughs> tpsteacher.com. Go get one. Cheap and effective. I like that. Love it. Cheap yeah. and effective. You're not kidding. This thing is absolutely one of the best things I've ever seen. And it's easy to uh, understand? Absolutely. Strap it onto your putter and go. Don't need Real you simple. standing over me to tell me how to use it. No. No, you don't want me barking at you anyway. Just Open up it. the box. TPSteacher.com. Make it work. TPSteacher.com. And we are back once again. John Ashton in studio. Jeff Smith up there at the uh, Plain and Simple Golf School. Hiding out in the golf cave at Otter Creek. And with us, Ashley McLaughlin from the LPGA, which is in Daytona Beach, Florida, where it is substantially warmer than it is where we have been whining about how cold it is up here. This is why you don't come visit us in person. Yes, especially during this this uh, time of year. It I, is I tend to stay home. All right. <laughs> you, you are with the Ladies Professional Golf Association. Correct. But let's talk about ladies amateur golfers. You know, we, we do the demographic breakdown here. We've got 78% males listening to us, 22% females, and it's basically the same demographic of golfers. Right. How do we change that? How do we get more women to play this game? 
Sure. Uh, that's a great, great question. And I will tell you, you know, I've been playing golf. I'm 30 now, but I've been playing golf um, since I was 10 years old. And I can tell you that um, as a woman now, uh, there's certainly it would have been a lot harder for me to try to pick up the game now um, as an adult versus um, as a child. So um, I do not have the patience that I did when I was uh, 10, 11, 12 um, growing up trying to learn this game. So um, it's, it's my philosophy and, and certainly that of the LPGA that the best time to get women started is actually when they're much younger, when they're girls. Um, so we do a lot of work here at the LPGA with our girls' golf program, trying to grow the number of girls actively playing golf, um, which keeps them playing for longer. The girls' golf is uh, elementary school age? It, there's actually, so we have girls participating in our program anywhere from the age of six all the way up to 17. Oh, okay. um, and, and even younger, actually. We have girls who participate at age as early as age three. And, but there is just something about, I guess, the, the natural abilities. Maybe oh. it's a, a lack of, of um, nervousness. Or, or caring about what the other kids think, which is something that many golfers are afflicted with when they hit the golf course. Kids just seem to pick the game up much faster than any adult I've ever seen. Exactly. They're, uh, you know, they're not necessarily as concerned about what they look like. Um, and as, as women, you know, we, we like to feel a little bit more proficient before uh-huh. we get out on the golf course and start That's playing. We want to feel right. really comfortable that we look the part. Yeah. Um, and as kids, kids who are growing up, they're really just more concerned about getting out there with their friends and having fun. So um, the level of pressure is a lot, uh, lot lower for kids when they're first starting out. I, I have a, a woman friend who has a new relationship. Well, it's, it's well-seasoned now, but when she first met her uh, current boyfriend, he was an avid golfer, and he asked her to accompany him and learn how to play golf because he'd love to do it with her. Mm-hmm. And she basically, the first step she did was she said it was an excuse for me to go shopping, so I was into it. I'm not, not surprised at all to hear that. And I think a lot of women, that's probably their first step before they get on YouTube and sort of look for those how-to video tutorials. Their first step is probably to get online or go to uh, their local dicks uh, and see if they can find a cute outfit to go to the golf course. Yeah. Now, now Jeff is one of the best officially number six in the state of Indiana. Oh, wow. Congrats. <laughs> and Thank you. I mean, um, he's, a, he's a great teacher. But Jeff, do you do you find that women who want to learn to play golf are more comfortable with a female teacher than coming to you? I think that um, I, I I have a hard time understanding why um, male teachers won't realize who's in front of them and instantly make them feel comfortable. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I have a, a time where when I have ladies that come to me frequently and they keep coming back because we do two things. First, I I sit down and I tell them some of the things that I have failed at in golf and then I tell them about how some of the times that I've made it more fun, suddenly they're more comfortable Mm -hmm. because they come in and they they bring to you some apprehensions of, well, where are we and who's watching me do this? Right. And I try to get them to do it and and come in with a friend because, you know, that everybody tends to, to be a little bit more relaxed when they're with someone that they like. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Whatever the situation. Yeah. And so I have a tendency to work with ladies in groups of twos, threes, and fours that they bring their friends. And then if I'm sitting down and not standing up, then I'm in a position where I'm actually having a conversation with them. And then I ask them questions about what what they're thinking and, and I want their uh, thoughts to come out yeah. early on, so that way it's me telling them stuff, and it's a one way, um, one way thing, and it's it's a monologue and not a, a complete conversation. As soon as I get it into a conversation, uh, things get very easy, and the ladies keep coming back, and then they have more fun, and then they get better in right. that order. And and Ashley, Jeff says something that I think is is very important is that they they like mm-hmm. to come with a friend yeah. or friends. I mean, Absolutely. Women have a tendency to feel more comfortable doing anything with. Yeah, we're 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 social creatures by nature. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that you know I just mentioned that he you know shared some of his background you know when he was first starting out because it's important for any new golfer to to realize that everybody starts out from the same place from scratch. Um, you know, going to the golf course for the very first time is a very intimidating place to be, oh, yeah. you know, from driving up to figuring out how to purchase golf balls and knowing how to stand and where to go and, 
you know, there's a huge dictionary of, of golf language that can be intimidating to a new golfer as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, allowing ladies and giving them an environment where they can learn with other women who are also just starting out um, helps them most certainly become more comfortable. Yeah. We've uh, had some conversations with uh, Debbie Wakis and uh, the, the architect Jan Beljan, mm-hmm. and they have a, a thought process of actually uh, approving golf courses for female friendliness. Love that. And they have some suggestions about how, you know, the the – Clothing for women should be up front at the pro shop, not behind the boxes of stuff they're sending back from last year. <laughs> you know, and just other ways to make a golf course more friendly, more or less intimidating for the females who are coming. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, as a woman, you know, growing up, you know, I've, I've been playing golf for close to 20 years now. And I can tell you, you know, not just from a, a fashion standpoint, but for here's a good example. Uh, my my freshman year junior golf team, or excuse me, my college golf team photo, I played at Florida State University. Um, I look back on it and, and I have to laugh because literally all of all of the women on our team were wearing smaller versions of men's clothing. I mean, our shirts were down, you know, beyond our elbows, our pants were to our knees, you know, and nobody, everybody was smiling, but you could tell nobody was really happy in that picture. (laughs) Um, um, You know, and it wasn't until a couple years later that we actually had, you know, um, apparel companies sending us clothes that was designed for women. Right. Um, And that's one of the exciting things, you know, with our girls golf program is just seeing how much and how far um, the industry has come with sort of addressing that for women in terms of the colors, the patterns, um, yeah. breathability of clothes. It used to be those heavy cotton shirts, and that's the only option that you had. Yeah. Um, but you can absolutely tell, you know, Debbie and, and Jan are, are make a good point because you can certainly tell when a golf pro shop or a golf course in that in that um, matter, um, you know, has women's golf apparel in the shop, but you can tell it's an afterthought. Yeah, you know, exactly. They have, they have one rack of clothes for women, and, and, and that's it. You know, yeah. very, very limited selection. Yeah. Just, just in case one should happen to stop in. in, in you know. Yeah, by, completely by accident, <laughs> of course. Yeah. So, Flo- <laughs> here's, you know, some, here's some what, blingy ball markers and, you know, three shirts you can – Yeah, can, Florida can, State, huh? Yes. Okay. State. Well, you know, we're calling you from Louisville, so we're going to have to, you know. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, go Cards. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, I didn't hear that. Ashley, would you hang on with us? We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back as we, we really haven't delved into the girls' golf program as deeply as as we would like to to uh, sure. to help yeah, get that information out there. So hang on with us. We are on those weekend golf guys. We have Ashley McLaughlin with LPGA, the girls' golf program, with us, and she is coming right back. Hope you do too. Don't don't go away. Hey, Jeff Smith is ready to go. He wants to see your video. Just go to Facebook.com slash golf guys you can get all the details there jeff's quick fix check it out do you owe ten thousand dollars or more to the irs then get on board with the tax admiral and let us steer your way to financial freedom the irs is the largest collection agency in the world they can freeze your bank accounts seize your car home will garnish your paychecks and benefits don't pick on the irs alone i can fight for you using industry secrets that can help stop the irs i'll cut your penalties slash your interest and reduce your overall tax bill sometimes i can even get it zeroed out completely we're an a-rated company with over 30 years experience helping people clean up their mess with the irs and we have a 95% customer satisfaction rating. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS, are facing an audit, a lien, or levy, then call me right away. Call 800-329-2708. Again, that's 800-329-2708. 800-329-2708. 800-329-2708. Hey, Jeff, I got to come to you, man. I need some help. Out playing golf last weekend, four of us, at least two of them, out drove me on a regular occasion. To you know, to pick up your club head speed, you know, I have found these these training aids that are just the world's best thing I've ever seen. Uh, Super Speed Golf has some training aid sticks, and they've got this beautiful training program that goes with them that you can get online. My clients have picked up a lot of club head speed and a lot of distance in a relatively short period of time. I'm more impressed with this than I am with anything else that I've ever seen on the market to make people swing their club faster. And we all know that's what, you know, one of the big factors in producing distance. That's right. Faster equals longer. That's what I'm looking for, man. Longer that's right. by being faster. Super speed. What's, what's the website? Where do Super, I go? 
superspeedgolf.com. Go to superspeedgolf.com, pick up some of these sticks, uh, go through their training program. It is eye-popping how much distance you'll pick up. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-554-4183 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 800-554-4183 to take your call now. Call 800-554-4183. That's 800-554-4183. Again, 800-554-4183. And thanks for hanging through the break. We are those weekend golf guys. John Ashton in studio. Jeff Smith at the Golf Cave at Otter Creek in Columbus. And with us from the LPGA headquarters. Headquarters calling uh, down in <laughs> Daytona Beach, Florida. The very comfortable Ashley McLaughlin. <laughs> uh, so, Ashley, you are uh, like a program director. Is that the marketing program? You're, you're one of the head honchos down there. Or yes, hon- I'm, a, I'm a manager, but I appreciate the promotion you've given me to oh, director. <laughs> not, a problem. not a problem. I hope the money that comes along with it comes in handy. Thank uh, you. The girls golf program. One of the questions when we first start talking about it in the last segment, do you insist on women instructors for that program? No. Okay. Um, and as a matter of fact, a lot of our programs are actually um, managed by men. Um, So that's one of those uh, sort of stigmas about our program. It it can be run by certainly a a man or a woman, just anybody who really cares about about getting more girls learning and playing the game of golf. The only reason I ask is because here in Louisville, um, out at Quail Chase Golf Course, Brenda Daniels is Mm -hmm. uh, the instructor, the girls. And she she is a phenomenal golf instructor. Mm -hmm. She's great. But I just wondered if it was necessary to be a phenomenal female instructor, or if you know, if you'd even like like Jeff let Jeff do it. Oh yeah, uh-huh. all you have to be is a phenomenal instructor. Well, he, and he is, and he has two phenomenal <laughs> female daughters who play golf very oh, effectively. Oh, yeah. fantastic! How old are your daughters? Well, I've got one who's uh, she's going to turn twenty here pretty soon. She's playing for Loyola University in Chicago oh, because yeah. apparently she likes to be cold. Oh great! <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and my uh, my seventeen year old uh, just is a, a senior in high school. Her her season is now complete, and uh, she's now debating between uh, the the merits of going to play for Indiana University, Butler University, or uh, DePaul University here in All Indiana. Right. She doesn't want to go far from home. Very good. And um, yeah, she's. I think she may at this week she may wind up at Indiana University, following her mother's footsteps. Okay, so you've got two proud yes. parents of two uh, very proficient golfers. That's very exciting. Congrats. Yeah, and yeah. just wait till his junior high school son comes of age. Yeah. <laughs> and let's jump on back, Jack. <laughs> A lot of fun there. Um, so tell me something. It's it's 80-something or other degrees where you are. Yeah. And it's just about the beginning of your busy season. Do you see uh, down in your area, Daytona Beach, do you see a lot of locals that that stay and play, or do you see an awful lot of, say, snowbirds? And do they do they play an awful lot right there at the LPGA uh, golf courses? They do actually. We have quite a few snowbirds um, who migrate down to Daytona Beach. Actually, I'm I'm sitting here by a window and I have a view of the golf course now, um, and I'm watching a couple tee off as we speak. So, um, and I'm sure there's a, another group of four some right behind right behind them. So generally, yeah, right around. Um, early fall, or what we consider fall here in Florida, <laughs> as, as fall-ish as this could be, <laughs> uh, we tend to get yeah a lot of people migrating down to to play uh, play golf and enjoy our beautiful weather. Yeah, I told somebody uh, in Florida the other day the 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 palm trees don't change colors, but the palmetto mm-hmm. bugs get a little lighter during the winter exactly. time, don't they? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Those and the mosquitoes tend to migrate wherever they go, and we're all happy about that. <laughs> 
Do you do the same so thing, uh, Ashley, that tonight. that Jeff does? Because when he's hanging out watching people tee off, he has a tendency to chuckle and take notes and, and try to market <laughs> them lessons when they're done. <laughs> I do not do that. Right. Uh, but when I do, I try to guess what direction they're bothered. <laughs> <laughs> and you realize, of course, guys, that that's one of the reasons why we amateurs don't like teeing off at golf courses. Because <laughs> we know that you're lurking. There's always someone watching. And snickering. Yeah, it's the snickering part that you really don't hear. Yeah, but we know it's there. We can feel the snickering wherever it may be. How much does the uh, girls' golf program cost on average for uh, – how long is it and what's it take to get a girl involved in that? Sure, that's a great question. So our national membership fee is $16. Um, so for that, girls can participate at any girls' golf program. We have 300 total across the country and actually growing every day. I think we're at 306 at the end of this week we will be. Cool. Um, and so one of the things that our, our programs really pride themselves on is making um, – their programs accessible and also affordable. Um, so I think average, they probably charge, I think the number, we're doing a survey right now actually, um, but I'd say on average girls can participate for 100 bucks for an entire season or year depending mm. on the schedule of their program. Cool. Um, and about 70% of all of our girls' golf sites also offer scholarships for girls who can't afford the um, right. seasonal fee to right. participate. And the other question I'm sure many parents are asking themselves that are hearing this is how good does the girl have to be in order to oh, not, yeah oh my god fully. it's it, the the beauty of our girls golf programs is that you can come in and we really cater to beginners um, so a girl with literally no golf experience is always welcome and um, what's so great about girls golf is that um, it's an all girls learning environment um, which is important because girls learn, obviously we have, as we talked about, they have different motivations for playing. Um, so girls are social creatures. We feel more comfortable in a setting with other girls. Um, a lot of times, especially with girls who are starting out sort of at that same level as us, so it, it helps with the comfort level. Um, and then pairing them up with those phenomenal teaching professionals. All of our sites have an LPGA or a PGA certified teaching professional um, on staff that oversees and administers the instruction. Mm. So they're getting quality quality golf instruction that's going to help to take them from a beginner, brand new beginner player all the way up to an advanced player. Um, and not only that, but they focus on making it fun, right. um, which, which is really important for kids. And, that, and it's, that's important for adults, too. I mean, that's, that's the whole Absolutely. thrust of our thing because we don't, we don't talk about mm -hmm. pro golfers because, you know, we don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, no, we really don't. We really don't. Not, because, on, the, not on the show. Yeah, we're not, we're not a fan side. You know, Golf Channel does that down there, and they do it quite well. Right, um, right. So, and we, we talk, Justin Thomas, we know his dad. He's a pro up here at a, at a club in, in Louisville. So we talk about him and we, and we talk about, uh, um, Tyler Duncan because he's a student of uh, Jeff's on the web.com tour. And we talk about yeah. Thor Bjorn Olison because his name is fun to say. But other than that, we don't care mm -hmm. about, about the pros. We're trying to make golf fun for people. And the, I don't know, the, the eruditeness, which is not a word, but you get what I'm trying to say here. Mm -hmm. The you know the old the old men in plaid pants aspect of this game has is is been changing. But just getting somebody exposed to this game, especially as a kid, and they realize, hey, this is fun. Right. Exactly. And that's and 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 then you go to from the fun standpoint to the practicality standpoint, especially for 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 girls learning golf because there are so many. Because the Title IX scholarships have to be equal, mm -hmm. there are golf teams that can't field a team for women because they can't find enough women who can play golf. Correct. That needs to change immediately, if not sooner. It, any parent out there, get your girl, put a, put a golf club in her hand and tell her not to come home until she learns how to have fun doing it. Yeah, well, and not not only for the the opportunities to um, you know go on to secondary education and, and college, but um, for business, it mm -hmm. is um, you know so advantageous for women especially to learn the game of golf. Right. Um, we talk a lot with our older girls golf members about um, how fortunate they are to be um, golfers. Because regardless of what industry they move on to work in, whether it's medicine, uh, whether it's business, finance, any of those fields, 
um, there will come a time when they'll have an invitation to go play um, that if they didn't play golf, they'd have to say no to. Yeah. And there are so few opportunities to go and spend four hours on the golf course. I'm sure you guys, you know, talk about this All the time. a lot, yeah. um, you know, with, with the, uh, either higher ups or um, other individuals who you could be networking with, even outside of your, the foursome that you're playing yeah. in. Um, so it's, it's huge. It's a great opportunity for, for women, especially to, to right. sort of be in that. that. And, and let me point out something about the shallowness of man is mm-hmm. that if you're, let's say you come out of college and you've played golf and you're, you get a job as a summer intern and the company is participating in a golf scramble. Well, the guy who's in charge of putting the scramble team together, if his final choice for the fourth player comes down to Bob from accounting or Susan, the intern. <laughs> Who do you think he's going to ask first? Right? He's going to ask Bob, but he should ask Susan. He's going to ask Susan because that's how shallow guys are. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you play well because you get to play from the forward tees. Exactly. Exactly. Most definitely. For more information on the girls' golf program or, or women in golf in general, where can you direct people right now? Sure. Um, girlsgolf.org is our is our web page. Web page. Um, there is, and for parents, um, I would definitely point them in the direction of the Girls Golf blog. Um, we have currently some really great articles and information for really parents or girls who are either starting out or looking for more information on how to get their girls interested, uh, which is a question that we get quite often from parents. Mm-hmm. Um, but our blog is a great home for information for parents who are trying to navigate the uh, junior golf um, sphere, uh, so to speak. Yeah. Um, girlsgolf.org, we also are very active on social media. We have a Facebook page. Our Instagram page is very popular. Um, as well as on Twitter. And all of that information is on our website. Fantastic. Girlsgolf.org. Ashley, thank you for spending some time with us here today on those weekend golf guys. Thank you so much for having me. This was so fun. Anytime we can help you out with anything, you know our number now. Absolutely. I'll be calling you guys to give you uh, weather updates. (laughs) Yeah, rub it in some more. (laughs) We appreciate it. Ashley McLaughlin, LPGA, the Girls Golf Program. Thank you very much, man. Have yourself a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you, too. Bye-bye. And you... Don't go away. Hang out with us. We'll be right back. If you're diabetic, this message could change your life. Is your blood sugar out of control even when you do all the right stuff? Are you afraid of diabetic blindness and the risk of amputation, as well as all those other side effects? Well, you should be. Is there anything that could help manage your blood sugar? Nobetes is a natural supplement that may quickly and dramatically lower your blood sugar. My name is Bob Corder. I've been using Nobetes for about three and a half to four months now. And in the first three months, I've actually lowered my blood sugars from 500 down to 139, and then it dropped to 88 to 90. My name is Kirsten. I'm a type 1 diabetic, and while taking Nobetes, my blood sugar levels dropped from 295 to 115 in just one day. The FDA hasn't evaluated these statements, and Nobetes isn't intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. But for many, it's helped drop their blood sugar. So if you've been evaluated with high blood sugar, don't delay. Evaluate Nobetes now. Call 800-553-0803 and get your free bottle. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-553-0803. That's 800-553-0803. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-554-4183 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 800-554-4183 to take your call now. Call 800-554-4183. That's 800-554-4183. Again, 800-554-4183. Hey, Jeff, I got to come to you, man. I need some help out playing golf last weekend. Four of us, at least two of them, out drove me on a regular occasion. To, you know, to pick up your club head speed, you know, I have found these, these training aids that are just the world's best thing I've ever seen. Uh, Super Speed Golf has some training aid sticks, and they've got this beautiful training program that goes with them that you can get online. 
my clients have picked up a lot of club head speed and a lot of distance in a relatively short period of time. I'm more impressed with this than I am with anything else that I've ever seen on the market to make people swing their club faster. And we all know that's what, you know, one of the big factors in producing distance. That's right. Faster equals longer. That's what I'm looking for, man. Longer. That's right. By being faster, super speed. What's what's the website? Where do super, I go? Superspeedgolf.com. Go to superspeedgolf.com. Pick up some of these sticks. Uh, go through their training program. It is eye popping how much distance you'll pick up. And thanks for hanging. We are back. You are back. We're all here together. Those weekend golf guys. John Ashton in the studio. Jeff Smith at the uh, golf cave at Otter Creek in Columbus. And uh, with us on the line, Jonathan Romeo with the uh, Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail. Hey there, guys. How are you? We are nowhere near as warm as you are, I'm sure. Got an email uh, this past week about uh, the BYOB tournament you guys do down there. And uh, you got to tell us about that. It's intriguing, man. Yeah, it is. We um, This was a concept that we started. Uh, this is our ninth year of doing it. It actually has become, um, sadly enough, a memorial tournament now. But it was uh, the idea of the brainchild was to try to get during the fall in between holiday times. It actually has turned into the largest shotgun tournament in the world uh we do nine different sites all have a shotgun at the same time and the theory behind it was to bring folks together that had not played the golf together in a while or your normal foursome that you play with every weekend to get them to come and make it a value added piece and it grew i'll never forget first year we had 120 people everybody laughs said oh yeah whatever <laughs> last year we teed up over 60 1,600 teed up last year. Wow. Wow, that's a big number. Down here in, at the trail, it's, we try to do things big, as big as we can do them. As you know, the trail stretches from the Tennessee border all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Each facility hosts their own tournament at 10 o'clock in the morning on the same day, and everybody hits the first shot. That's how we made it, and we made it to the Guinness Book of World Records, I guess it was a year, two years ago. I-65. I, I, I live, you know, a stone's throw from I-65. You just get on and go south, and you can see most of your golf courses just from that one interstate, can't you? Yeah, you want that. That's the beauty of what we did. You know, our, this is the largest project, golf project ever attempted in the world, and you never drive more than two hours from one facility to the next. Wow. And as you said, if you're coming down 65, you every two hours you're hitting another site. And <laughs> each site is either a 36-hole facility or a 54-hole facility. So the the theory is people come to the state, and you don't drive, obviously, more than two hours in between facilities, stay a few days, and you've played, you know, four or five different facilities, and each facility is completely unique, completely different. You would never know you're even in the state of Alabama. This this isn't some municipal style course either. I mean, you guys host a couple of uh, professional tournaments, both uh, PGA and LPGA, don't you? We do. We we host the Barbasol Championship, which is a PGA Tour event. Uh, it's opposite the British Open, which is actually it fits into our our timing and our schedule here in Alabama. It is a little warm in July, obviously, mm-hmm. but from a standpoint of the conditions, from an agronomist uh, standpoint, to what we actually get having you know folks out for for the summer vacation. From a volunteer standpoint, that event we host in the Opelika Auburn area, which is down near a little university called Auburn University. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a full field PGA Tour event, 132 players, and like I said, that's opposite the British. And then we also host um, the LPGA, which uh, happens to be my favorite, the, the Ladies Professional Golf Association. The Yokohama Tire LPGA Classic is hosted in Prattville, which is right near Montgomery in the capital of Alabama. Yeah. Yeah, we just had um, Ashley uh, McLaughlin from LPGA on with us talking about how to get more women involved in golf. And do you find, because it is your favorite, I'm sure you're there every year, Jonathan, do you, do you find that the little girls who are brought by mommy and daddy to watch this thing maybe leave a, a little bit more interested in picking up a golf club and learning how to do it? You know, I think um, the LPGA, several things. Um, the LPGA has grown just Unbelievably, I mean, all women, women's sports have. But if you look at what the LPGA was just five or eight years ago compared to where, what it is now, I mean, these are world-class athletes, obviously with golf moving into the Olympics, with the Solheim Cup, with the International Crown, with all of the things that have propelled 
the LPGA to, to get, to, in my opinion, to move itself up a notch or two. Plus, you know, I think the biggest thing that you just brought up is when you see families um, come to an LPGA event, it doesn't break the bank, number one. Mm-hmm. It's not, uh, you know, you're not paying $50, $80 a ticket like you do at some tour events, PGA right. Tour events. But most importantly, the girls get it, okay? The players get it. They understand part of their job is to sign autographs. Part of their job is to go over and hand a, a little kid a golf ball. Part of their job is to take pictures with fans. And I think you hit the nail on the head with the way the LPGA is treating not only the, the adult fan base, but the, the youth. You're seeing more guys, young guys and girls, and with girls golf, you're seeing opportunities open up for girls that it, it's probably double or tripled the amount of young girls who have started playing golf. I mean, at our golf courses down here, I, I would venture to say it's two to one um, young girls that are coming out to play versus young boys that are coming out to play. And a lot of that has to do with, I know Morgan Pressel, I've seen her on TV, I've seen Paula Creamer on TV. Right. Those right. those things that you see right there, they're just, the LPGA has, has really done a heck of a job of identifying to grow the game and to grow youth sports. It all stems from the professional athlete. You know, let me let me say something here. I'm going to bring Jeff in because I've got because he can address this also, and and you with the the first hand uh, hands on experience with the LPGA. <laughs> Jeff Jeff has two teenage daughters. One already an accomplished college golfer. The other one soon to be an accomplished college golfer. Maybe they will head to a professional career. Maybe not. As a guy, Jeff, you probably appreciate the marketing technique of getting most of the big name LPGA stars and having pose in bikinis. But once you become yeah, a dad that's of that's an hard. LPGA star, I'm sure you probably won't like that technique anymore. Yeah, I, I get that. You know, I get it on both on both levels. Um, but the truth is, is that if if the tour is going to be uh, popular. They're going to have to do an awful lot of things that ingratiate themselves to a wide variety of people, mm-hmm. and and I think that they really need to to get uh, their exposure, so to speak, uh, at the the ladies golf and the junior golf and the you know the girls golf level, where I think that they if they spent more of their time, effort, and energy there, they would actually grow uh, the game and grow their sport. But at the same time, they're also trying to market to anybody and everybody. To keep their uh, to keep their purses up and to keep you know yeah. sponsorships and whatnot, so they've got a big task. Yeah, it's, so it's, I get I get that. It's yeah. a tough uh, tough. Thing. You know, it's, it it is, and and I think you know it's kind of <clears throat> we're we're in a special situation here, having both the PJ Tour and an LPJ Tour event within fifty miles of each other and within sixty days of each other, and it's a big it's a big task, obviously, to, to have two events that are televised nationally and internationally and all those things. But it's funny. When you talk to the sponsor who has sponsored both events and who has played in both pro-ams and who has been at both events, what you get is exactly what I just said. You get that the girls get it. During the pro-ams, yeah. they're playing from the same tees that most men are playing from. Okay, yep. Yep. It lets you really see how good good they are because they're playing the tees that you and i tee up from yeah they're hitting the ball 310 yards off the tee and here we are flying at 270 with everything we got right <laughs> with a with a but, wind behind but, us yeah <laughs> co- correct and, and i think i think the other piece is uh, and you and you alluded to it having two college or two girls that have moved on to college golf if you look at the recruiting standpoint, and believe me, we have a ton of great junior golfers that come out of the state, okay? We aren't just for football. We have a lot of great golfers. If you look, if you've got a female, you've got a girl who is, you know, on her way to college, 17, 16, 17 years old, and she's somewhere in the, the you know, upper 70s, mid-80s, getting a scholarship, they're out there, and yeah. they're very easy to get, and it's much, much more of an attractive piece now than than it used to be it's it's an, a sport that's accepted you know just like volleyball and cheerleading and everything else yep. is accepted and i think the biggest key where you're really starting to see golf pay off with the lpga and girls golf and all those things is how many times nowadays do you go to a golf course and you see a foursome and there may be three guys and a girl or maybe two girls and two guys a husband and wife 
and the amount of business that's done, as we know, on a golf course, mm -hmm. where it used to be intimidating for women to go out and play and be on the golf course in a business setting, let me tell you what, they're out there playing as much golf as any guy is, number one, and most of the time they're playing golf better because they're all perfectionists. Yeah. They all want to be perfect at everything. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, and if they can show up their husband, all oh, the yeah. better. Jonathan, real quick, we're just about to run out of time, but for folks interested sure. in either the BYO thing or just the, the trail in general, where would you send them for more information? Well, you know, we have a great website. RTJGolf.com has everything on it. We have a uh, full-service travel department here at our corporate office in Birmingham. We'll arrange everything from your tee times to your range balls to your lunch, to your uh, hotels. It's a one-stop shop. You just go to rtjgolf.com, and uh, it'll lead you the whole way of the trail. And, again, once the weather starts getting even cooler, I think it's getting that way up there, starting mm -hmm. to now, yep. uh, it's always warm here. And if it's not warm, it's at least warmer than it is there, I the, know. The sun always shines in Birmingham, Alabama, and surrounding climates. That's climbs. right. Jonathan, hang on with us just a second. I want to ask you a question off air when we finish this uh, segment. Uh, but you who are listening... Please come back next week because we are here right right at the same place at the same time. You can also download our free app for your iPhone or your Android phone. You can go to thoseweekendgolfguys.com and listen anytime you need to. You can check us out. Please uh, like us on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash golfguys or follow us on Twitter. We are at WKND Golf Guys. Go out, whether it be cold where you are or warm. Go out and play some golf however you have to do it. Have a great week. We'll be back next week. Bye. Do you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Then get on board with the tax admiral and let us steer your way to financial freedom. The IRS is the largest collection agency in the world. They can freeze your bank accounts, seize your car, home, will garnish your paychecks and benefits. Don't take on the IRS alone. I can fight for you using industry secrets that can help stop the IRS. I'll cut your penalties, slash your interest, and reduce your overall tax bill. Sometimes I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company with over 30 years experience helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. And we have a 95% customer satisfaction rating. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS, are facing an audit, a lien, or levy, then call me right away. Call 800-329-2708. Again, that's 800-329-2708. 800-329-2708. 800-329-2708. If you're diabetic, this message could change your life. Is your blood sugar out of control even when you do all the right stuff? Are you afraid of diabetic blindness and the risk of amputation, as well as all those other side effects? Well, you should be. Is there anything that could help manage your blood sugar? Nobetes is a natural supplement that may quickly and dramatically lower your blood sugar. My name is Bob Corder. I've been using Nobetes for about three and a half to four months now. And in the first three months, I've actually lowered my blood sugars from 500 down to 139, and then it dropped to 88 to 90. My name is Kirsten. I'm a type 1 diabetic, and while taking Nobetes, my blood sugar levels dropped from 295 to 115 in just one day. The FDA hasn't evaluated these statements, and Nobetes isn't intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. But for many, it's helped drop their blood sugar. So if you've been evaluated with high blood sugar, don't delay. Evaluate Nobetes now. Call 800-553-0803 and get your free bottle. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-553-0803. That's 800-553-0803.